this piece here is part one in response to an author of a book entitled Thieves of Civilization, Afrocentric Attempts to Appropriate the Cultural Heritage of Native Americans and Latino Indio Mestizos in America. That within itself is a um, conflict or an oxymoron, but uh, again, I'll continue these series. I had done a post with the picture showing um, an ancient, very ancient ceremony that was taking place. And I'll go into more in that depth as we continue these series uh, based upon this book. Uh, the book is written by, edited by Gabriel Haslip uh, Vieira. So these of civilization, Afrocentric attempts to appropriate the cultural heritage of Native Americans and Latino Indio Mestizos in America. I am going to unequivocally and without a shadow of a doubt dispel the myths that uh, these people that are claiming to be Native Americans were actually uh, the indigenous people of this land or what we know as the um, Americas or those that are claiming to be what is popularly known as the Olmec, where we know them better to be the Uli. So I'm going to get into a little segment here of the uh, Garifuna and who the Garifuna are and where they are from and where they are not from. And you all will probably be able to follow me um, because we're going to go into a little bit of a series of movies, very popular series of, of uh, movies that were based upon these people. But of course, over time, things get whitewashed. So um, I will be right back. I'm going to go and delve into this a little bit, but I'm going to get into the history of the Garifuna. You're also going to hear one of the ladies that actually is an organizer of the Garifuna uh day in belize and guatemala so uh when we get into that you'll understand that a little bit later again culture trumps books trumps google and everything else so once you know the culture i'm not let me read, let me back up i'm not saying don't read the books please read the books get all the information that you can please google some information if you're looking at museums and exhibits and things like that but I also encourage you to know the culture. Once you know the culture, you'll have a better understanding of what you are seeing on these clips and what you are reading. And you'll be able to filter and decipher who's telling the truth and who's not. So stay tuned. If you're taking the time to look up the Garifuna or the Garinagu, which, oh man, I could break that down for a while, but the Garifuna... It tells you that they are a mixed African and indigenous people originally from the Caribbean island of St. Vincent who speak the Garifuna dialect of the Arawakan language. Again, this is a group of people that are Arawaks. I know that some have been taught that Arawaks look like what you would call uh, mestizos or mulattoes today. That is not the case. And again, how could these people have originally been mixed with African? And you're going to find out um, <laughs> this is long before any transatlantic slave trade. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get into that, too, in this series and start breaking it down. Uh, and I know it's been a minute since I posted something like this, but it's very near and dear uh, to me. You're also finding this it's a population of 200,000, which that's not the case. There are way more. So you're going to start getting into these these numbers and these stats that they give you that are untrue. Because if they only keep the girl freedom people at 200,000, then they'll try to explain how they brought 20 million uh, Africans over here. So this is going to dispel that myth. You'll find myth. You'll find the girl female, um all throughout dispersed all throughout the uh caribbean islands you'll find them all throughout uh south america what we know as mesoamerica central america and north america under many different 
names. The Garifuna or the Black Caribs, which are Arawak. They're the same people, one and the same. What you also find is Taino. They are all the same people. It is the British that have decided to separate them. All this is with the various names are just different. They are splits of the same group, which you will find out a little bit later, especially when we get into the Black Caribs. That when the when the British got here, which was later on, which was well after the Spanish and the Portuguese. But let me go back and talk about the Spanish. The Spanish were trying to enslave the Garifuna and the Garifuna were fighting them. They could not. They, I repeat, they could not enslave them to work with the sugar cane. They refuse to be enslaved. They've always been fighters. They've always been warriors. And we'll get into the Guerrero or the warriors again as we continue this series. But uh, I wanted to go into that, that the Spanish never conquered the Garifuna, never conquered them. And it wasn't until the British, when we get into with, dealing, in, dealing with the British, and this is in 1769. 1769. But again, let me go back because the Garifino actually started to settle in what we know as the uh, Caribbean islands or the West Indies around 1200 CE. But they came from what we know as the mainland. There are some that have been arguing with me, telling me that the uh, the Maya what we know as the the Maya did not settle along the Mississippi. I'm going to dispel that myth during this series as well. Again, that they came from the mainland and started settling on the islands. So going back to what happened in 1769 during the Carib War, or what was known as later on the Black Carib War, is the British... This was after several series of wars, so I'm just putting it in all one long war because there was there were several wars that took place over the years. So this is where you get into the Pirates of the Caribbean. You know, Jack Sparrow being played by Johnny Depp, and they put all the dark makeup on them and make them look dirty and dingy. These were actually dealing with Caribs. This was actually dealing with the Arawak or the Garifuna. Don't let them fool you. They just whitewashed it made them a little dirty and said here are your pirates of the caribbean but it gets back to these wars the carib wars that were taking place between the arawak carib taino garifuna same group of people so the british started to separate the darker skinned garifuna and shipping them to what is known as Guatemala and Belize today. So in the tradition of keeping the culture, there is what's called um, Guatemala Culture Day. And it celebrates when they landed landed on back on this part of the mainland in the area known as Belize and Guatemala. And they were able to find refuge back here in the mainland. So this was partly due to the fact that those on the mainland knew that they were all relatives. They were all related. And I'll get into that again. It's so much I want to get into. This goes back to um, the ancient dance of what was known as the Danza de um, Diablo or Diablos, the dance of the devil. And I'll get into that a little bit later, which is also going to get into the uh, picture of of the ancient ceremony that is taking that was taking place at least at least five thousand years ago let me say it again at least five thousand years ago that this ancient ceremony took place and it, it will make a lot more sense to you once i break down the painting some uh professors at the smithsonian and uh several other uh universities distinguished universities or trying to tell the stories of the pictures but don't know the culture. So when I break it down, it's going to make a lot more sense, uh, sense to you. 
But uh, as I was stating before, that the Carib started out originally in what we call the mainland. The main, the mainland and settled in what we know as the Caribbean islands. And they began to um, try to label us as African. Now, I'm going to tell you when this happened. That um, there was an Englishman by the name of William Young. William Young. In 1795. Remember, this is after the... Um, Carib Wars, or what's known as the time of the Pirates of the Caribbean, or the Pirates of the Caribou. He's saying in 1795 that Africans came, they were shipwrecked. <laughs> Here's the kicker. He's saying that they were shipwrecked in 1675, that Africans were coming to the Caribbean and they were shipwrecked in 1675, and this began the people of the Garifuna or the Garifuna. How could that be the case when it was already discovered by artifacts that the Carib or the Arawak came from the mainland and settled on the island in 1200 CE? This is how they start getting and planting in your heads that all of us are African. That you have been stripped of the title of being an American Indian and labeled as an African. How could that be the case? This man is writing about an exact date, an exact year when an African ship was wrecked on the island, out the close of the, in the, in the Caribbean island. He's writing about something that took place 120 years prior to him writing about this when the British were not here. So how is he writing and, and telling you? See how they 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 take your culture, mimic your culture, and erase you totally out of history, the history books. That is impossible. Again, the artifacts show you that they found was from 1200 or at least what they say 1200 i could go i'm gonna go back and show you this older than that 1200 ce so from 1200 to 1675 it's almost 500 years anyway i digress but the picture that you're seeing here is a picture of the treaty between the british and the black carib notice there their dress and their headgear underneath their headgear. There's a particular hairstyle, the way they wore their hair. And I'll get into that on the next video, or probably it may be two or three videos when I break down uh, the paintings that they found in uh, the Yucatan and explaining that particular celebration. But what you're about to hear is a piece from one of the, um, organizers of this Garifuna culture day and she's going to break down and she's going to tell you who the Garifuna are but especially she's going to tell you who they are not and I say again just because someone is is mixed with something else does not remove them from who they are now I want you to pay attention because she's going to tell you and I'm rewinding the video and placing it back in there she's going to tell you that Garifuna are not African. You could be mixed with African that came later, but the Garifuna, the original Garifuna, are not African. They go back thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Hmm. Now, again, this is going to, this is part one. I know this kind of linked to what I'm saying here. This is part one of dispelling the myth of the book that has come out by this individual stating that uh, who the, the Olmec are. And it's amazing that he puts a Guerrero up on the picture and puts it beside an Olmec, of course, because that Guerrero is a Mestizo. 
He's mixed. <laughs> oh, man. With Old Mac, Chinese, and uh, Spanish. So you're going to see that. So again, when, when someone is mixed, sometimes some children will come out with features of their fathers. Sometimes they'll come out with features of their mother. So this man actually has the uh, phenotype of the Arawak or the caribou, but he came out with fairer skin. And I'll get into that a little bit later uh, as we get into the ceremonies in another video. I rambled on long enough. Listen to this lady. I hope you enjoy. See you. Work and maintain this free event is because it's needed in the community, especially a day for the children, a day for family to come and celebrate, especially um, their heritage, okay? Um, it's the celebration of 221 years of the arrival of our Garifuna ancestors to Guatemala, to Livingston, okay? So all are welcome. Tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend, and tell another friend to come and have fun. If you have any Garifuna traditional outfits or anything that you want to wear traditional, please do. Please do. It's not a requirement, but you you can, especially show your garifuna -ness, show your pride. No es un requisito, vuelvo a repito, no es un requisito que se ponga un traje garifuna. See, I'm in Kansas and I'm representing Garifuna, okay? I have my Proud to be Garifuna, one of my many Proud to be Garifuna t-shirts. So, this is what you need to do. I had so many people ask me, what is Garifuna? You know, and I love explaining to people about my heritage. I love telling people about our history. I love telling people about what is it, you know, that makes us so special in Guatemala, in Central America. And believe me, they are amazed and they really are like so engaging. Everywhere I go, you're always going to see me wearing my black, white, my yellow, white, and black, okay? Everywhere you see me, I'm always rocking. I'm always, always showing my garifuna -ness. I am a proud Garifuna, and I want to tell everyone out there, it does not matter if you don't speak the language because a lot of people just among us, there's that discrimination about those who do not speak the Garifuna language. I'm not saying that it's, it's not important. I'm not saying that you shouldn't. If you have a way of learning it, whether it is schools now, there's a school, there is Mr. Witi, who is a teacher of the Garifuna language in the Bronx. And I know in LA, they also have their schooling. So if you have the opportunity of learning a little more, please do so. In my case, I don't speak it. I understand very much, but that does not stop me from doing what I have to do within my community. The language, the lack of speaking the language does not stop me from being a Garifuna, okay? I might know my family is blended, my family is mixed, but I know I am proud to be Garifuna because guess what? I was able to learn the history. I'm able to know the dances within the Garifuna community. The Garifuna doesn't have just doesn't have just punta, doesn't have just kukukuku, doesn't have just mascaro or wanarokwa. You know, we have so many dances, we have so many drummings, and a lot of people who claim how proud they are of being Garifuna and they Garifuna a hundred percent, they do not know these traditional things. Um, I get really upset when I see how our traditional dances are being ruined and are being are being taken as a joke, okay? Tradition should not change. Yes, with evolution, there are things that change, but something that is traditional has no room for changes because that's what identifies us. That is the one thing that teaches people who we are, okay? That's what brings us apart and will put us apart from everybody else. So punta rock and traditional punta is not the same thing. All right? And make sure you tell the children that because there's a confusion among our youth that they think shaking their booty like this, no tomorrow, you know, like they are a washing machine is punta, which punta is very sensual. It's not sexual. Punta dancing is sensual. Okay? It's a sensual dance. It's not a sexual dance. So remember that. So again, before I get off subject, um, Please share the video, share the information, share the flyer. Be proud of who you are. Be proud of who you are. If you are a descendant of a Garifuna, 
and you might be blended with Dominican, Puerto Rican, Haitian, African, Cuban, um, um, Spaniard, Argentinian, it does not matter, Bahamanian, it does not matter. As long as one of your parents is Garifuna, you are a Garifuna. Black American with Garifuna, you are a Garifuna. Always remember that and acknowledge who you are. Be proud. Black American with Garifuna, you are a Garifuna. Always remember that and acknowledge who you are. Be proud. Okay, be proud. Black American with Garifuna, you are a Garifuna. Always remember that and acknowledge who you are. Be proud. Okay, be proud. Being able to walk around Kansas for the past four days that I've been here, everyone is wearing something that says, proud to be Garifuna. And you'll be surprised how many people ask me what is Garifuna. Just here where I'm at, enjoying with my friend and her daughters, more than five people ask me what is Garifuna. And proudly I told them what it is. You know, it's my heritage, it's my culture, it's my people, and they are delighted.